I want to see the Alliance map. Tell me more about Kent. Basim has written, claiming to have found the woman Fulke and asking for your aid. He has taken shelter at St. Hadrian's Priory. Any news of Sigurd? Nothing he mentioned. But if he has found the paladin Fulke, Sigurd cannot be far behind. I will go as soon as I can. Good. Be safe, Favor. Jack, Basim has brought word of Sigurd's location. We're leaving at once to find him. Well done, Eivor. After so long, it finally occurs to you to search for our Jarl. I applaud your half-hearted effort, but I will not be joining you. Dag, this is no joke. On the ship, now. Someone needs to stay home and direct the affairs of the settlement. As you seem to shun this place as often as possible, it must fall to me. If you wish to stay, so be it. But when Sigurd is back among us, we'll see what status you have among the Raiders. Say whatever makes you feel superior, Eivor. I know Sigurd will understand my decision. Do you doubt me so completely that you will not raise an axe to save your Jarl? A fine way of putting it, Wolfkist. But go, find the Jarl, bring him back. Only do not get lost along the way, as you seem to more and more these days. This is not done, Dag. We will speak when I return. Dear daughter Augustine didn't make a distinction between faith and understanding. That is my point. So you hold no stock in faith? Only in the rational proof. The sun. What I mean to say is, faith is paramount. Yes, for without it, Christ's sacrifice means nothing. He died to save us, did he not? From the original sin of Adam and Eve? Yet evil persists. Yes, evil persists, because he gave us free will. Does a newborn babe, slain by a despot, have free will? Yes. No, I mean, that is too simplistic. Or the priest, whose heart is torn from his chest by the wolf? Judas, who was predestined to betray the Nazarene? Uh, some argue Judas was used. Do my ears deceive me, Brother Hortbert? You question the scriptures? Declare Judas an innocent? A preposterous blasphemy! No, no, uh, that is not what I said. <laughs> Brother Cedric, am I not the most pious of his servants? Out! Out! Making new friends? A person's tongue gives you a taste of their heart, Eivor. And such information is often useful. And how do these sallow Christians taste? It was only a figure of speech, Eivor. And I have tired of it already. Is this how it must be between us? Of course not. I'm grateful that you have come. So what of the joy kang of Fulke? In your message, you say you tracked her to Kent. She is here somewhere. And as of last month, Sigurd was with her. But there is no guarantee this will be the case tomorrow. So, what is your plan? We are deep in their god's heartland. A heathen and a heretic. To hunt Fulke, we'll need a Christian snare. Fulke is hardly a saint herself. These Christians abhor her strange ideas. True. But unlike us, she can carry herself as one of them. She won't hide from everyone. Not with a prisoner in tow. So? Where to begin? I've made a friend, Abbot Cunibert, full of pious fire, but with ambition that far outweighs his wit. And what does your friend Cunibert know? Come, I will introduce you, and we'll hear the full tale together.
Have you found some peace in your time alone, Basil? I am always at peace, and never alone. I move among the people of the world with great joy. I watch them, study them, learn from them at all times. This is our duty. The Hidden One's calling. You know, for the first time since we met, you sound more like your apprentice than yourself. <laughs> Surely Hytham sounds like me, if I have taught him well. Your creed and your tenets, you mean? That's right. And our sense of, how should I say, deep responsibility to the betterment of mankind. That's quite an ambition, but it doesn't explain what you see in Sigurd. My brother is not so generous. Ah, but your brother is someone special, important, and I want him to see that. I hope to show it to him. Is this not a blessed plot? God's own country. And this Eden should be given to his servants to tend. Abbot Cunibert, this is the Norse I spoke of. Ah, yes. And quite a fearsome one at that. Basim says you know the paladin Fulke. Indeed. The Lady Fulke passed this way not more than a month ago. We talked, we drank. Very pleasant woman. And where is she? Eivor will be your axe, Abbot. Whether to fell a tree, or hew the limbs from an enemy. What have you promised him? Oh, just a trifle, Eivor. A little problem I believe you can help me with. Speak your terms plainly, Abbot. I will decide if the bargain is worth my time. Ah! Your wolf shows its teeth, Basim. Let's cut to the point. What favor would you ask in exchange for Fulke? Some weeks ago, our elderman in Kent was called to God. A terrible loss. King Alfred has chosen his replacement, but has not yet announced the name. I must know it. Now. All of Kent will see soon enough which thane he has chosen. Why not wait? I want early access. To woo him before his exalted position is made public and every fool is at his door. Who else knows the chosen man? The king's emissary. Sent with a letter of congratulations to the new elderman. Intercept him and bring me the news. When I know the thane's name, we'll discuss how I might win his favor. Your king will not be happy. His church meddling in his politics. Does this not delight you, Eivor? A chance to defy Alfred? I am God's humble shepherd, sent to protect his lambs. If Kent's new elderman is a wolf, I would blunt his claws. This emissary, how will I find him? Tunbridge Monastery sent word that the King's men always pass a few nights in their hospitality. Begin there. I'll get the elderman's name. you find Fulke. All in good time. Now, if we're done, I have business up the south coast. Falkenstone has the best fish in Wessex. Then I will find you there, when the Elderman's name is mine. Cunibert is ambitious, but well-connected. We will not find Fulke without him. I suppose we'll see. What will you do? I'm not done playing with these Christians yet. I will see you in Falkenstone. Alfred's emissary spent a few days here. Someone may know where he went. You tried to catch flies, or would you ask something of me? I'm looking for a man. He passed through here on the King's business. Oh, bugger off, eh? Or I'll call the guards. I'm sick of people. You need to heal your own ills. And people are sick of you. Oh, Jesus wept! Guards! Guards! Hadane! Saints, preserve me!
square bit door. I'm in no mood for wind belching, so choose your words well. I heard the King's men came through here, caused a stir. A man of your wit noticed them, I bet. I am witty. Finally, someone sees. I'm always telling the wife, but will she listen? Will she bollocks? Alfred's emissary. Where? Him and the bard ended up in a copse by the bridge doing Lord knows what. Sounded like they were murdering a cat. Singing? If you say so. Who are you? Loitering and lollygagging. I'm looking for someone. An emissary from Alfred. Have you seen such a man? Ooh, la-dee-da! Listen to you, all I and mighty. Get away with you, you valley lily! If you would rather feel the edge of my blade, it can be arranged. Yeah, that I respect. Forceful, to the point. As refreshing as a summer ale. You're a strange fish. Did you see the man or not? I did. He was getting pie-eyed with that barred Gowan and causing quite a ruckus. They left together. See? That wasn't hard, was it? Harder than it should have been. There was a bard drinking with the emissary. I should find him, see if he knows anything. That ale swamped scob can't have gone far. My troops. La, 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 la. You there. You alive. <laughs> Patience is a tired horse. Got to deplod. Another tottering teat sucker who can't hold his drink. Let's clear your head. Ow! Why do you smite me so? Truce! Fire on you! Oh. What infernal wakes me? I'm the one you sing of, Bard. Stern of eye and scanned of mercy. Have you not seen the ravens feasting in my wake? Enough! Your word mangles are making my hair ache. You and Alfred's emissary were drinking in the tavern. Tell me where he went. Were we? I was so ale-addled. Perhaps a small and silver thing upon my palm might help me recall? How about something long and sharp in your gut? All right, no need for that. You paint a vivid picture, Dane. He was headed to the white coast to the southeast, Dover Fortress. He said it is where they train those religious fanatics, zealots. They pray all night instead of sleeping. My thanks, and in return, wisdom. Too much beer piping will grow a fool in wit and words. My thanks, weaver of the obvious. Now leave me to my unholy punishment.
horse or head. Alfred's chosen elderman is a thing called Tetment. The abbot Kinnebert will want to know. I should meet Bassem and the abbot in Fulkenstein. Oh, you must try my ale. Eivor, you have news? Ken's new elderman will be Thane Tedmund. Tedmund? Oh, the Lord is testing me. He is made mouse by you Danes. Barely leaves his fortress at Rusister. How might I gain his influence if he will not speak to me? Or to anyone? It is a puzzle. To inspire loyalty, Tedman must owe you something. Such is his life. Go on. A fortress stormed. A man kidnapped. If you beat back his enemy, saved him from sure death, his gratitude would be... Swell. It would know no bounds. But that fortress will be harder to pry open than a nun's knees. Perhaps. Perhaps not. Are you hiding something, Bassam? There is a lumber mill nearby, correct? Bemisfield. Alfred invests much in fortifying Wessex, and uses our forests to do so. The mill provides his wood. Tedmund is there. Impossible! How do you know? I heard rumors that Tedmund had been lured out of self-exile to manage work on the fortifications of Canterbury. Taking him from a lumberyard is less dangerous than assaulting a fortress. But your rescue attempt will not have the same flair. Is it worth it? It may still work. Yes. Yes. Bring him to the Megaliths. And Fulke? When I have Tedman's fealty, you shall have Fulke. Now go. I will rustle up a small rescue party. Do a roaring trade at Reculver and Tunbridge. They pay well for my catch. The monks? Does those parchment skin Christians ever eat meat? Don't you believe in Jesus? They refrain because he died for our sins. I'm wary of this abbot, Bassam. He is self serving and evasive. Can he really deliver Fulke? The abbot is a friend of Fulke's. That is clear. So long as he doesn't suspect our motive, we may have a chance. Indeed. This brings to mind a story. Perhaps you've heard of it. The Scorpion and the Frog. A children's story? A cautionary tale. The Scorpion wants to cross the river, but he cannot swim. So he enlists the help of the Frog. The Frog agrees to carry him on his back, extracting a promise that the Scorpion will not sting him. Let me guess, the Scorpion René explaining his nature and both drown. The Scorpion crosses the river and stings an innocent man, killing him. So what does this tale tell us? That your stories are clouded, and their meaning doubly so? It shows that every tale has a thousand possible outcomes, many of which are surprising. If the abbot does not deliver Folke, he will die at my hand. And we will continue our search. A sobering approach. Just ahead. Lead. I will follow. I hope this chase will catch us a plump hen. Once the abbot has Tedman's gratitude, he will deliver Fulke. It will cost us nothing more than this. If that leaden wit keeps his word. Oh, you prefer to work in the shadows. Oh. They are 
Dicken. Did you have a boat for Bella Gluton? Catawalling and you live. Live? Oh, saints protect me! Silence will save you, Titman. Silence, not your saints. <laughs> Flee, my friend. We have the man we came for. Does this venture not set your blood ablaze? You don't prefer working in the shadows. And so we have. To steal a man, take him with swiftness, and escape without anyone on our heels. We hide in plain sight. Such is our way. But only until the moment of success. The final strike. I prefer to act and speak plain. Kings and lords who do not are often misunderstood. <laughs> I prefer to act and speak plain. Kings and lords who do not are often misunderstood. Yet, as a leader yourself, you cannot deny that subtlety and intrigue are a cloak you must wear. How many of your clan know the true circumstances of Sigurd's absence? Hmm. You see my point. A leader must know when to speak and when to stay silent. For silence is not always a lie. It can feel like one. You truly embrace the concept of hiding in plain sight, eh? To its very fullest. As I do in everything. In the name of Alfred, King of Wessex, I demand you release his royal subject <gasps> into my care. Come no closer, Christian, else your man dies by my blade. Please, I I'm not the man you want. Keep your eye on this one. He'll be worth a hefty bounty. Any false moves and I will snip your heels. We have your man. Now let's finish this shadow play and be gone. Are you sure that's Tedmund? He's dressed as a lord, but that man is shorter and fatter than I recall. I'm not Tedmund. I, I, I'm not. I, I swear upon the holy rood, I, I am not Thane Tedmund. What in heaven's name is happening here? Who are you? Speak quickly or I'll slit your throat and leave you for the crows. Shergar. I, I'm called Shergar. Lord Tedman pays me a measly coin to serve as his double. Brother Shergar? You are far from Augustine's Priory. Uh, I left the cloisters many moons ago, Your Holiness. The monastic life was not my calling. We can use you yet, Shergar. 
Summon Tetman to a meeting. Get him out in the open. Tetman has no care for me or what I have to say. My orders come by letter, never by mouth. I hardly know the man. You're of no use to us, then. Perhaps I should just kill you, here and now. No, no, wait, 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 wait. wait. Let, let, let me think, let me think. Oh, Danes! T -t to storm the walls, you need Danes. Th there's a raiding camp west of here I was told to be wary of. I acting as Tetmund, I ordered a band of soldiers to capture them. If you hurry, you may be able to stop this. If another band of Danes wants to join our assault, we'll have the distraction we need to get inside Roosister. If the Saxons don't slaughter them first... I, I am still Tedmund to the men in the field. I could speak with their captain, send his men away. It's a fearless plan. The Nornia knit winding paths that cannot be unknotted. It seems Ruth's sister was always in our path. Abbot, stay alert. We will send word when we're ready to capture Tedmund. And this fool? He knows much of our plan. Do what you want with him. I won't risk our plan on the shambling of this fool. Come, Brother Shergar. And perhaps today would be the time to consider a vow of silence? An army of Danes are all we need to take the fortress. Let us hope. It is best to snare a wasp with honey. Have you ever considered more subtlety? I leave manipulation to you, Basim. You appear to see it as an art. It is both art and science to bend a man to your will. And harder still to convince them that they are firmly in control. Shurga was quick to betray his lord. Do you not think he would sell us out as swiftly? you our lives, friend. These Saxon whore sons would have killed us all. Yes, they would have. And now's your chance to hit back. March with us on Rochester, and drain it of riches. I will gladly, friend. But we few will not break those iron-thick walls. And we have no allies in Wessex. None who could be called upon to attack their countrymen. Mercia will heed the call. Giedrich will provide our viking at Hort. We'll send a message to Oxenfordshire. The men of Mercia would gladly take a swipe at Wessex. What is your name, warrior? Runa Egelstotter. We need ships, Runa. We have a small fleet moored upriver. But a naval chain blocks passage to Rue Sister's walls. I'll remove it, and your people will bring their ships. Now, gather these fallen weapons and armor. Giedrich and the men of Oxenfordshire will need them to hide their Mercian origins. My warriors were denied Valhalla today. I cannot bear the idea of gifting their weapons to more Saxons. Their sacrifice was great. Their gift will be all the greater. And they will know justice with our victory. It will calm their restless shades, I promise. Will your men bring the armor to the battle? And what is our plan? In the morning you will go to Buckingham, remind Giedrich of his promise. When you have his bond, Meet me on the shore near Roosister, with the ships. Ah, but Cunibert must be warned in advance. He'll need time to muster his rescue party. Runa, that is your task. I'll tell you where to meet him before you leave. All seems in order. At first new light, I will leave. Good. That gives us time to drink. You travel so far to carry out your duty. Is this the life of a uh, hidden one? Always on the move? No. Mine is not the usual path. The creed does travel. Our ideals are universal. We believe that. 
So there's nowhere you call home? No place I call home. No. Weird. <laughs> For me, home is family. But I have no family. No one? Not even Hytham? Parents, brothers, all dead. I lost my parents when I was nine winters along. Without Sigurd, I would have. I would have. There is always one unbreakable bond. Yes. Children. <laughs> they bewilder you. They can cause you so much worry. Fill you with joy. Even stop your heart. And if you're lucky, they replace you. I was not so lucky. I had a son. I miss him terribly. Even now. I am sorry. Bessam. He was taken from me. By someone I trusted. A friend. A mentor. A man who I would trust with anything. But a man you trust with anything can take everything. sister will not be an easy nut to crack. Time to prepare. With the chain down, Githrich and the ships can get through. Eivor, we await your orders. You brought your weapons and armor? Aye, Raven Tamer. Good. Now we dig in and wait for our friends. Well met, old friend. When the chance arrived to lodge an axe in the sod of Wessex, you thought of me. Such an honor. Is everything else in place, Eivor? Are we ready to take Roosester? Rally our army. We will drag this mouse from his hole.
You're dead. Pathetic. You're one, two, brother. Strike, Eivor. Another Saxon goes to his grave. God damn you to hellfire. Before I let you take this fortress, I'll cut you down, Dane! Rose sister will not fall to your rabid pack of mongrels! to take this fortress, Dean. Alfred's army will smear your innards across the battlements. We're not here for stone and sand, Thane Titment. I shit on you! You and your toy gods! I will not bow to you like some puppet's lord! I would rather die! How much will your king pay us to keep your sniveling head upon your neck? An army marches upon us from the south. A holy man from St. Hadrian's Priory, backed by a field. Ah, then, Abbot. Kinnebert? God be praised. If riches are all you care about, the Church has it in abundance. If the terms are fair, you'll have your freedom. A chest or two of silver for a shit-stained sewerette. The stay quiet, or I'll not be able to stop my friend from slitting your throat. Ah! Watch yourself, heathen. You handle me too roughly. Die for the indignities you've showered upon me, Dane! I mean no offense, Thane. You're only a hefty ransom to me, nothing more. That's why you batter down my gates, kill my men for a purse of grubby coin? You have no honor! Enough, or I'll return you to the Saxons with ten fewer things. No. Oh. <clears throat> you there! Heathens! Let this good man go, or suffer an iron sickness. And what do you offer us in return? Your lives? We lost many good men storming this keep. It will not be in vain, Christ's slave. Twenty chests of silver. Give them all they ask, Kinnebert. A hefty sum that will leave God's coffers hollow? I cannot give it up without some assurance. Tedmund, you extort me in return for my life? You were swiftly met, Abbot. Not long after these... these scallious worms took my fort. On the Lord's bidding, Tedmund, at prayer, a terrible vision befell me. A host of heathens, your life in danger. A coincidence I find rather... <coughs> rather ominous, Abbot. Do you... <coughs> God help you, man. Are you well? Air. I need... I need air. He's dead. The work of poison, no doubt. No, 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 no. Rouse the man! 
He cannot be dead! He must not be dead! Poison? How does the man die of poison in our arms? Many great kings and paranoids have carried poison in times of war, as an alternative to capture and ransom. A catastrophe! Alfred will choose another and... By the saints! Alfred! How will I explain this to the king? We followed this road to its end, Cunibert. You may not like where it led, but you owe us our half of the bargain. You shall have your paladin. I need a day. Return to my abbey tomorrow, and you shall... Oh, dear, oh dear. These delays are grinding at my bones. We should abandon Cunibert, find Fulke ourselves. Peace, Eivor. Speak with Giedrich and relieve him of his oath. I'll meet you at Cunibert's abbey. You fought like beasts escaped from your hell today, Giedrich. Your oath to me is fulfilled. It was good to stand shoulder to shoulder with you against the pox dogs of Wessex. May our friendship endure. This tangle briar of Christians and lords means nothing to me. I'm here for Sigurd. I understand. When you find him again, come see me. We'll feast and sing with mead and friendship to warm us. Agreed. I would say, well met, brother, but I cannot shake off the needle itch of dread. Is something wrong? I followed the abbot here, kept him in my sight. But the monks, his servants, I have seen nothing of them. Dead? I do not think so. But there is no good here in this grave hush. And where is the abbot now? In his quarters. Come, and be on your guard. Does this have the stench of betrayal to you, brother? Why would the godly shepherd ally with the heretic? Kinnebert is a man who craves power and position. With Tedman dead, he must find it somewhere else. There is truth in that. Keep your eyes and blade sharp. Kunibert, your guests have arrived. Come. Supper's ready. The dear abbot sent me a warm invitation, said my friends were eager to meet with me. It's early for supper, I know. But Kinnebert's ale goes so well with roasted lamb and cinnamon blueberry peas. I couldn't resist. Where is my brother? Is he... is he not here? Mon Dieu. I never told him. Kill her, and we'll never find Sigurd. Sit. Ava, eat, and let me tell you the tale of a man who talks with gods. You mock me. I have killed for much less. Of course you have. Isn't that the way of this ugly world? We call the sheep and thin the flock as we see fit, you and I. Most who walk the earth are little more than talking blood bladders, wasted flesh. But not Sigurd. Sigurd is something else. Sigurd has been touched. He is deified. The gods, they speak through him. You lured him in with that lie. Your words are bile and blight. You should have listened, Eivor. I tried to tell you. The gods are real and their power is within our grasp. <laughs> you will never find him. Not till I have had my fill. To old friends. This really is delicious, Kunibert. Is it cloves I taste? Well, that concludes supper. Kill them, and bring their bodies to my sanctum in Canterbury. They will be upon us soon. Maybe there is another way out.
Fulke let slip that her sanctum is at Canterbury. She did. And with no cause. I'd approach the place with caution. It may be a lie. It may be, but it's the only lead we have. I hope all this innocent sacrifice is worth the trouble. It's Sigurd, my brother. Of course it is. Then come. Let us dive into the Maw of Death. I was never keen on seeing my winter years. This will not be for nothing, Eivor. We will find Sigurd. It's not just him. I want Fulke to suffer. This place swarms with Fulke's people. Sigurd will be well guarded. Caution and subtlety should be our path. Ready. Follow me. This is a trap. Why would Fulke give us her sanctum? She baits us. Cocksure and arrogant. But she cannot see failure in her path. Her fearful wit will say otherwise. Whatever we find there, keep your head. You chastise me like a child, Bassam. I guard you like a father. Nothing is served with your brutal end. You have much to do in this life. I know it. No riddles. I sense a greatness within you both. Your destiny is not to stain the stones of this godhouse with your blood. Two arms, Bassam! So we are to blunder in. Jesus, God, my blows! Ah! So we are to blunder in like a fox. Still here. We'll burn this Christ house to the ground. <whistles> this must be the way to full case sanctum. Then let us go. into our hands. What does it mean, these word tangles that speak of elves and demons?
anything we can use. I may have a fortress in Sussex. The order trained soldiers there. We must be sure. Secret is running out of time. Anything else? Documents of interest to the Hidden Ones. Hytham will surely want to look. But for Sigurd, Porchester is our only lead. Hmm. If he is in Porchester Castle, we'll need a massive army to crack its walls. I have many friends in England now. If I call on them, they will come. They will. Bessem. She severed his arm clean off. Can a man survive such a loss? Physically, he can. Mentally, it's hard to say. So much stress can drive a man to despair. If you suggest he might take his own life as Tedman did, banish that idea. I must tell my people at the settlement that their Jarl remains a captive. They will not take it well. We will not fail again, Eivor. I'll scout ahead and send word to the settlement when I know more of Porchester. Be ready. Where is he? Where is Sigurd? He... he's alive. But not with you. Where is he? Dag, not now. I need to speak with Ranvi. You never found him, did you? Tell us, Eivor! We deserve the truth! I need to speak with Ranvi. Step aside, now! You never found him, because you didn't look! <clears throat> I see you, Eivor! I know what you are. Eivor, you come alone. I fear what that means for Sigurd. I... I could not find him. That madwoman Folke, she... She slipped away, took him to Sussex. We need an army. Call on our alliances, remind them of their oath to me. We must act before... Before... Before what, Eivor? She tortured him, Ranvi. Did unspeakable things. Severed his arm and left it as a gift. I fear she means to kill him. Slowly. Gods. Stop there, Wolf Kissed. This ends now. Dag, turn around and walk away. Your habits are not my own, Eivor. I do not flee responsibility for the sake of my glory. I stand firm with my people. For many months, I have stood at your side, keeping faith in Sigurd's judgment. Because I believed in him and his vision. Do as Eivor commands, he told me. And I have. 
Against my better judgment, I did as you have asked me. And where has that left us? Without a Jarl? Without a purpose? Watching you chase glory around this land like a spooked hare! You could have come to me in confidence, Dag, but that offer is gone. I have no need of it! My mind is fixed. Hear me all! I challenge Eivor for the leadership of this clan until Sigurd is safe home! Walk away, Dag. No! We fight to the death! You spew nonsense, Dag. This is absurd. Enough! Let the circle be made! I'll burn you like a suckling pig! Please! Please, both of you! Is that the best you can do? Want to do this? Walk away. What's the matter, Eivor? Are you scared? Your grand forced my hand. Yes, and the cost of disrespect is death. You said it yourself. All he demanded you gave him, that should be enough. I have no need for one so fragile in my hall of heroes. He fought for what he believed in. Does that not count for something? Does it? You killed him all the same. What is the true cost of disrespect? The choice lies with you. It should not have come to this, old friend. Take this and fly to Odin's Hall. Whatever you sought in this life, may you find it in the next. <gasps> Go to your homes. I will lay him to rest. Go to your homes! Dag accused me of betrayal. He accused me of breaking my oath. And this, this is the answer I gave him. Now you will hear the truth unvarnished. None, none more than me wishes for Sigurd's safe return. You know this. I know this. All of you! And I will burn the fields and dredge the rivers of Wessex to find him. That, that is my oath. That is my oath. Find Sigurd. You will not be without your Jarl. This I promise. Dag, 
lived as you died, proud and defiant. I cannot begrudge you for that. I miss hearing you tell your stories, old friend, but I remember them well. Guest house. These are very generous guests. 